Today, I am going to show you how to build or put together a GMRS base station. That means a GMRS radio that you use inside your house, something that is actually very easy to put together. But if you've ever been online and asked the question, what do you need to put together a base station or how do you put together a base station? Some people tend to overcomplicate the answer and try to make it more difficult than it has to be. As usual, as in all of my videos, I will explain it in simple English that even you can understand, and I won't try to impress you by using big words like some people often tend to do. You will see how easy it is to put together a base station, and by the end of this video, you will be a YouTube certified base station building expert. So to build a base station, you will need a few things. First and most important being a radio. I will talk more about what type of radio to use momentarily. A power supply. I will go into more details about the power supply momentarily. An antenna, hopefully bigger than this one. And you will need a piece of wire to connect from the antenna to the radio. This piece of wire is commonly referred to as coax or coaxial cable. We're going to talk a lot more about the right type of coax to use momentarily. The radio that you choose can be any GMRS radio. Most people will use a radio made for your car, such as this Midland MXT 575, which is a 50 watt radio, but you can use any mobile radio. However, the more power that the radio has, the better, and I will explain why more power is so important in a base station momentarily. You will need a 13.8 volt power supply. These usually look something like this. You could use a 12 volt battery or a 12 volt power supply, but most mobile radios will not output their full RF electricities if you do not give them the 13.8 volts that they crave. The power supply will also need to provide enough amps or amperage to power the radio. A 50 watt radio like the Midland MXT575 or the Wuxin Ocean KG1000G will require around 20 amps. A 15 to 20 watt radio will only require 10 to 15 amps. Check the manual for your radio for the exact amount of amps required, and then buy a power supply that has slightly more than that. Something like this Samlex SEC 1235M is a 13.8 volt 30 amp power supply. Perfect if you're using a 50 watt radio, this power supply costs around $190, affiliate link below. Or you could use something like this Duracom LPX14, which costs around $100, but it only outputs 13 amps. So this would be good if you're using a lower power 15 or 20 watt radio. Regardless of what brand power supply you get, to connect the radio, you just stick the red wire from your radio into the red hole, and the black wire from the radio into the black hole. You will then have to tighten it down so that the wire doesn't come out. Different brands have different type of connectors, but the basics are the same. Insert wire and tighten down using whatever tightening down facilities that specific power supply has. If your radio came with a cigarette lighter plug or some other sort of connectors at the end, you can simply clip those off and stick the bare wires into the hole. You will need an antenna. You could get away with using a mobile antenna, the type that you put on your car. Even this tiny antenna that comes with the Midland MXT575 is actually pretty good. The Nagoya UT72G, which is a mobile GMRS antenna, is good. Or the Midland MXT26A, which has 6 dB gain, is going to work even better. You will also need something to mount the antenna on if you're going to use a mobile type antenna. In that case, you would need a magnetic mount or clamp on mount. Most mobile antennas have an NMO type connector. So you would want to purchase an NMO type mount, which simply screws on to the base. This antenna is too long and it keeps smacking my camera. So I will remove said antenna from the base. But remember, if you are using a mobile antenna, you will also need a ground plane. 
So just slap it onto a cookie sheet or any piece of metal, leaving at least a couple of inches all around it, and you're good to go. For the best possible performance, instead of a small mobile antenna, you will want a full-size base station antenna. And you will want to put it on the roof of your house. On my roof, I have the Tram 1486, which costs about $120. Affiliate link below. The Tram 1486 is just over five feet long. It is a big boy antenna. Any large base station antenna on top of your roof will far outperform a smaller mobile type antenna. The Tram 1486 is not made specifically for GMRS. I have not been able to find a specific GMRS antenna to put on the top of your house. The Tram 1486 is a UHF antenna, so you will need to cut it, or any UHF antenna that you purchase, you will need to cut it and tune it. Cutting the antenna to the right length is very easy, but you will have to read the instructions. Basically, you just look on the instruction sheet for how short to cut it for the 462 to 467 Hubba Jubba Hertz frequency range and clip it down to that length. It takes about 10 minutes or less. After you cut the antenna, you will need an SWR meter to make sure you didn't screw it up when you were cutting it. I use the Farzometer 2000, pronounced Farzo meter 2000, which is a modified Surecom SW102, which cost about $60. Affiliate link below. And finally, you will need coax. And the type and quality of the coax is more important than you may think. And this is because of the high frequencies that GMRS uses and those pesky physics. And because of those pesky physics, you will lose a lot of power through the coax. It will simply ooze out and fall to the ground before it ever makes it to your antenna. And the longer your coax, the more power will ooze out. For a typical roof installation, you will probably need at least 50 to 100 feet of coax. That means you're going to lose a lot of that power. This is why starting with a higher power radio, as previously mentioned, is so important because no matter how many RF electricities are coming out of the back of the radio, after it goes through 50 or 100 feet of coax, only one half to one quarter of those electricities will make it to the antenna on your roof. The rest of those electricities will be scattered all over the ground. Messi and Poloni make some very good high quality coax with the ends already on it. I use LMR 400 cable, which is not the best, not as good as some of the Messi and Poloni cables, but it is less expensive than that higher quality stuff. And the amount of coax that I have is not that long, so I'm not losing that much power. And finally, the last bit, if you're going to mount your antenna on the roof, like the big boys, you will need to ground that antenna. I'm not going to get into the specific details of how to ground the antenna, because whenever someone talks about grounding antennas online, no matter what they say, some expert will come along and say that they said it wrong. Then some other expert will come along and say that they are wrong and then they will argue over it and have a pissing contest in the comment section for months trying to prove who's smarter so i prefer just to give a high level overview of the grounding you can look up the specifics online watch out for the experts you will need to ground your antenna in two ways at a minimum the antenna and the mast or whatever you bolt your antenna to needs to be grounded that way should the antenna ever get hit by lightning the lightning bolt won't go into your house and kill your entire family and burn your house down hopefully if everything goes as planned the lightning bolt will walk down the grounding wire and dissipate safely into the ground it will still kill your radio no grounding system is going to completely save your radio but the idea is that you will still have a house and a family afterward and the coax should also be grounding using a lightning arrestor device, which will look something like this. Using one of these is important because static can build up just from the wind blowing across the antenna, which could attract lightning and have other undesirable effects. The lightning arrestor type device will bleed off that static and will also help protect your equipment and your house and your family should lightning ever hit it. So once you have all of those things, this relatively simple list of equipment, you connect them all together, you turn them on, 
And if you did it right, you will have a GMRS base station. It is actually very simple. Congratulations, you are now a certified YouTube GMRS base station expert.